rationale. You won't die, usually. FDA, good old FDA, trying you don't to get, go after more and more cigars. You don't want to get bit by a yellow spotted lizard. You will die painfully. Dig it up, on, oh, oh. oh. dig it. Dig it up, on, oh, on, oh. come on. Dig it up, on, oh, on. Oh. FDA is going to have to dig All it up, on, right. oh, on oh. their own research because they Ready? don't have shit. Let's fucking do it. What's going on, everybody? Today's episode of The Burndown, new research contradicts the flavor cigar banned. They want to ban flavor cigars. They say it's because it's going after children, but that is not the case. We're going to talk about it coming up next on The Burndown. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burndown. My name is Justin, a.k.a. Dapper Cigar. This gentleman over here is Eric, a.k.a. Brother Cigar, a.k.a. Slick Rick, a.k.a. DJ EJ, a.k.a. Easy E, a.k.a. your mother's favorite DJ. Damn, that was good. That's a lot of them. If you're new to this channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. (laughs) Check out our website, burnoutpodcast.com. Become a member. It's five bucks a month. You get exclusive discounts and members-only giveaways. Also, check out all the merch we got. Eric's wearing the polo, which hasn't come out yet. I got the Cheers Chin Chin Salud shirt. Check out our cigar, the blueprint. I'm wearing the hat. We got it all. We got cutters. We got lighters. We got the whole shebang. Blueprint cigars. Check it out. New design ashtrays, which I like better than these. Yeah, so we had these are all the black ones. These were the old design. Now we got white ones that came in. We could probably go back to the black ones. We're probably going to have multiple colors. But, hey, a new cigar report came out, and we want to talk about it. We yes. love we love yes. shitting on the FDA. We love telling them that they don't know squat about cigars, and they're not giving us our fair shot at giving us our own damn definition. So this one. It's been in the works for a while. They've been going after flavored cigars. And uh, this report that just came out a, cu- a couple days ago from the PCA, which is a premium cigar association. Well, a know, couple days from when we're filming. Yeah, you know. but Yeah, we, I know. Because it, no, it's, it's September 11th is when this article came out, yeah, right? When it comes out next week or two weeks, you know. It, It'll be two weeks ago. <laughs> but we can just say it just came out. It did. It, actually, no, it, that's a good point. It did j- kind of just come out because a lot of the articles that we talk about. I know it's a good point. We're com- we came out from like maybe and most a of couple the time, of years ago. So You know, and, and just like anything else, you know, most people don't want to read the article. So that's why we have people like us. Just like how in other industries, I don't want to read articles in about crime or uh, sports. I just want to watch a video and someone tell me about it. I don't want to read, period. Yeah. Well, I like to read, but, you know. Do you, not, let, let me, let me ask you, do you honestly like to read? Like, no, for the, uh, yes. For the longest time, no. I didn't have, I didn't like to read. I made my mom buy me every single Harry Potter book. Didn't open one page of it. Um, I really only started reading until I got older. But you like, do you like to read? Like, yeah. you sit down and you look forward to reading? Hmm? I don't believe you. Okay, <laughs> don't believe me. No, I no. I mean, really, I do. I haven't. Uh, I haven't read in a few months, but no, I think uh, I do enjoy to read. Just or do you like what reading? What the result of reading gives you? Oh well, yeah, I like. You know the, what I'm saying? Like, do you, does anybody like? For instance, working out. Do you really like to work out? Like, do you like putting your body through all that that stress? Um, or do you like the results that working out gives you? Yeah. Like, I don't like waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning and sweating at 5.30 in the morning. And But I like being done by 6.30, having lunch, protein shake ready, fully dressed. Right. Feel totally energized for the rest right. of the day. Right. Yeah. I mean, that. I, so, yeah. I mean, I like the same thing for reading. I Like, do I like really being sore the next fucking day? Do I like my chest feel like it's going to cramp up? No. But do I like looking good? Yeah, no, but no, <laughs> I, I actually like being like in good shape. I, I do like to reading. I know, like, you know, I can wake up, you know, whether I have a cup of coffee, read a few pages, but more or less, I like to read more because I like to say, yeah, I read that book, or hey, I learned blah, 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 blah from this book. And uh, I like what you get out of it, just like anything else. Yeah. But no, for a long time, I didn't like reading. But then I realized, you know, every millionaire reads books. And, and I think it also depends on what you're reading. Yeah, like I started reading like a lot of like mafia books and like mob stories and stuff like that, and then I started getting more. Well, I was really reading like mafia stories of back in the day, 
and like Lava Tanza Heist and all that stuff, and then also like self help and entrepreneur books. And now it's really more just like entrepreneur and still the same self. Yeah, because sometimes I'll pick up a book and even like the self help or the entrepreneur, I'll pick it up and just can't really get into it. And I'm like, I, I just. I know I want I want to read the rest of it because I want to hear. I've heard a lot of good things about the book, and I want to see what like what the information's in there. But sometimes I just can't get it. I'm just like I can't get into this book. I just well, maybe it's the way that it's written or whatever. But I but put it down, pick like something else up. Read like three or four self help books depending on what it like the topic the same, is. Really. It, you know, it's all yeah, it's all the same stuff just said differently. Um, so, so this where uh, were we? I went on a tangent. Yeah. So this article that just came out recently before I had to go, you know, did it just come out? <laughs> God damn! It. I didn't like my cigar yet, but um, uh, so it kind it came out, and it's been in for a while that they're going after flavored cigars. Essentially, saying this article in a nutshell, we'll go through the whole thing, but saying that it's gauged towards children and specifically targeting targeting minorities. And not so good neighborhoods, which is ridiculous. So we're gonna really dive into it and talk about why that is such a horrendous and kind of insulting accusation that the cigar industry is trying to do. Yeah. So I mean, like the cigar. Yeah. Like while Eric lights that, this this article is on um, premiumcigars.org. It's a, I think it's a PCA article. Yeah. Uh, written by PCA, right yeah. September eleventh, twenty twenty three. The title of the article is New Research Contradicts Flavored Cigar Ban Rationale. Okay. So like Eric was saying is that there is this new, um, I guess, the FTA. Uh, FDA. F- I'm sorry, F- FDA. I was reading CTP and, and FDA at the same time. It's, there's this emergence of a new FDA-funded research challenges the agency's justification for the regulation and prevailing assumptions asserted by anti-tobacco interest groups. So what's it saying is there's new research that contradicts yeah. this proposed ban on flavored cigars. And the proposed ban on flavored cigars, they're saying that it is because it's targeting certain groups. It's targeting minorities. It's targeting um, certain, I guess, under privileged health because it has you know it has vanilla or has you know even like bourbon flavored cigars but why would younger people be attracted to a bourbon flavored cigar beats me but they're also talking about this term health equity being that it's like people that are not in equal positions of good health which yeah so i as i'm reading i think it's complete bullshit to be right i don't even know what it means i they, they mentioned health equity quote health equity a few times so i had to google actually what it means so it says Health equity, the state in which everyone has a fair and just opportunity to attain their highest level of health, which I don't really even know what that means. So yeah, don't eat shit and exercise. Yeah, duh. <laughs> so, you know, it starts off saying, you know, flavored cigars have long been under scrutiny for their alleged appeal to younger individuals and the potential mask to taste the tobacco. Um, let's see. The pending rule on characterization of flavor in cigars, we see a shift in, quote, health equity where the rationale rests upon an obstinate ob- unsubstained notion that the scar industry targets minority groups with flavored products. So again, they're saying it goes after children and minority groups. And this is, yeah. So that's what the FDA is saying. So, the F, so they're saying that it, it goes after these groups, right? But then the next paragraph, it says clearly, it says neither the agency nor the anti-tobacco nonprofit organizations that are calling for this flavor ban have credible data on youth usage nor evidence of product targeting specific groups. Yeah, youth, youth usage of flavored cigars. Yeah, of flavored cigars. Yeah. I'm just trying to not read through the whole thing. But they say... We do it anyway. Uh, therefore, they couple youth access with the quote-unquote health, healthy equity buzzword for better political narrative so they're basically saying they don't have any data to show that youth people are using this nor do they have any data showing that this product is targeting specific groups in this quote quote unquote health equity so they just lump it all together and then label it under healthy equity buzzword so it it you know ropes everything together typical politics you know, so exactly they, typical they, politics. they like to use buzzwords to make it sound a lot yeah, make better it than say, you yeah confuse well, everybody and that's funny too because somebody will say oh healthy equity and they hear the he- the equity word they're like oh my god it's not equal blah yeah. blah blah and we look it up it says oh it basically means that people aren't in the same uh, again opportunities it, to get the best health that they have the like, state in which everyone has a fair and just opportunity to attain their highest level of health 
Like, just think about that for a second. How does everyone in this beautiful country not have a fair and just opportunity to attain their highest level of health? Yeah, it's called don't eat crap and exercise. Uh, Like, that's so, that's such a political buzzword. It's so ridiculous. And I can understand, like, I, what, what could that possibly mean? That there's people that are in certain areas that don't have access to, like, good foods? Okay. But even if that's the case, you can still work out. You can go outside. Yeah, you don't need you shit. Out, you can work out in your room. You don't need shit to work out. Even Literally if, nothing. Or even if there's, you know, uh, if you're, I, I, I find this hard to believe, but if you're just surrounded by bad food, there's no food, good food, quote unquote, then just you have to ration your yeah, portions. But, that, of but it. that's also, I think, I think that's like, also bullshit too, because like even let's say you're living off of, of food stamps, right? Don't food stamps work at grocery stores? Like you can take a food stamp, go and get milk, eggs, that's meat, what I'm all that stuff. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand. You, you have. You can find no matter where you are in this country, unless you live. There's in, a grocery store. There's a grocery store, and there's healthier and healthy foods. Right. The, the bad foods aren't always the resource, and that's the problem. Is that everybody claims, "Oh, I'm not. I don't have the right opportunity." No, you just choose to eat like shit. Yeah. Okay. Everybody is there. Is a grocery store fucking everywhere? And if you can't, you're getting. If you're getting food stamps, living off of the government, you can use the food stamps to get healthy options. Like you don't have to use them to get fucking, you know, a, a cheese wheel or something like, yeah. or or a. Or some processed Jesus. bag of pork rinds. Like, get a freaking get some eggs and uh, and milk. So, it says, uh, okay. So they don't have any evidence that say that it's credible. Any credible data on youth usage or evidence of, of the this product targeting specific groups. Uh, they said that that they just rope it all together to use the bu- buzzwords, just like political people do. They say, however, purchasing patterns and consumer profiles show that legal adults consume flavored cigars especially in the age gated pca membership so they're saying that although they they come on and say oh uh targeting towards young people targeting towards you know areas that don't have the same health opportunity uh that's not they, that, that, that that i'm just excluding that well that, that makes no sense they come in here and they say it's targeting toward the youth people youth people smoke this People that have bad health smoke this, blah, blah, blah. And they go, you have no data to prove that. If anything, the data proves the opposite of that. Because the data that they show, it says purchasing patterns show that flavored cigars are purchased by adults. Legal adults. And let's not forget. And this is <laughs> Not kids. And, and it's, it's towards the end of this article. But let's not forget that, at least in New York State, you have to be 21 to buy any kind of tobacco product. Whether that's cigarettes or cigars. Yeah. If uh, in the eyes of the United States... You can enter the military by 18. So you're basically considered an adult at 18. And if not, you're definitely considered an adult at 21. So tell me where your children in high school are buying flavored cigars. You want to hear something? Let's, let's, let's flip it on its head. You want to know something that children abuse in high school? Vape. Fucking alcohol. Oh, well, of course. You don't see any ban on alcohol. You don't see any ban on this and ban on that and saying no. alcohol's targeted towards kids. If anything, alcohol's putting fucking kids on a can. Okay? Putting kids on the can. No. That, nobody says any boo about that, but they say for the, well, the small... And, and, to, and alcohol, beer is a huge fucking industry. I love beer. I love beer. <laughs> okay? You don't see them saying, hey, kids are they're going after kids. Meanwhile... Guarantee it's probably a thousandfold. But it goes back to just a lot of things we always say when it comes back to this about tax dollars. This yeah. is such a small. That's what I'm saying. Small group. That's what I'm saying. Why waste all your time and research resources going after this? But that's what I'm saying. That's my point. Is that we are such a small group, and they're going to go after this. Meanwhile, alcohol. I guarantee that the amount of ki- like the percentage of high school students that drink alcohol versus c- smoke cigars I, gar- cigars I guarantee cigars, yeah. I guarantee you it's it's got to be like 10,000 times or 100,000 times like how many high school kids do you have in the country there's 350 million people let's call it I don't know a quarter of that right let's say a quarter of infants a quarter of, uh, uh, I don't know call it you know, uh, 350 million. Yeah. I don't know. Call it like 50 million kids. Yeah. Let's say there's 50 million kids. Yeah, hold on. Let's see. I guarantee you, Let's see. out of those 50 million kids or, or high school students, 
See, Google how many high school students are in the country. Total children, 73.1 million. So. So what does it say? Se- 70, finding, yeah, this is the census of 2020. So 73.1 million. How many kids under 18 are in the U- U.S.? Uh, la, la, la. In 2019, 73, um, 73 million Americans, about one in five, were under the age of 18. Wow. So listen to this. I'm listening. Okay. So you said how many kids? How many kids you said? 70-something million? 73.1. Okay. So this says, this is from Underage Drinking National Statistics from Responsibility.org. So it says, the rate of current alcohol consumption increases with increasing age, according to the 2020 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. From almost, oops, from almost 1% among 12 to 13 year olds 1% of 12 to 13 year olds which is to nearly 17% of kids ages 16 to 17 and 32% from 18 to 20 so a third of kids 18 to 20 that's when you go into college are drinking and it says 17 so almost a fifth i would argue that it's higher than that i would argue it's at, it's at least a quarter right cuz how many kids do you know in high school drank fucking everybody Right, eighty percent. That's minimum. what I'm saying. So now you have this industry, right, where alcohol, multi-billion-dollar industry, mm-hmm. and you got twenty percent, thirty percent. Let's call it twenty to forty percent of kids, because you know when you get to let's say high school kids, twenty percent, because the eighteen to twenty is not high school. Twenty percent of high school kids are drinking alcohol out of the seventy million. That is 14 million kids drinking alcohol, underage alcohol. Crazy. Okay, from six from from 14 to fucking 18. But you have this cigar thing that nobody's drink, nobody's smoking cigars. It's got to be less than fucking. It's got not even not even on a, on a radar, not even on the scale. Okay, it's probably no like comparison. Less than like a tenth of a tenth of a tenth per- percent of kids are smoking cigars. But you want to come out and say ban fucking flavored cigars. But you don't see any push against uh, yeah. against the alcohol. Mm-mm. Here's the, this, and this is the other preposterous part of this. Ooh, you like that word? Preposterous. Love it. Here's the other preposterous portion of this article that the FDA is erroneous. Erroneous. You know, for the longest time, I never knew what that word word was during the that movie. Fucking, that's like uh, be the best part. Uh, yeah. Erroneous on all accounts. Yeah, on all accounts. And I had to Google it, and I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. So this is the other stupid part of this uh, of this quote unquote uh, let's see reason why they want to ban flavored cigars. So the recent study exploring the presence and type of premium cigar retailers with neighborhood socio demographic correlates in the United States between 2019 and 21 examines the premium cigar association membership to make the case for again health equity reasoning for the flavored cigar ban. PCA memberships predominantly sells non flavored premium cigars. But most association members are also aromic or infused cigars, such as barrel, bourbon barrel aged cigars. So for the people who don't know what social demographic is, like I did not I had to Google it. <laughs> Again, it's a combo of social and demographic factors that define individuals in a particular group of population. So to continue on this point, uh, so they say a central po- uh, point around this assertion that flavor cigars are intentionally marketed towards minority communities exploiting alleged preferences for flavored cigars. According to available, again, here's another big word they use, am- amicable data, most flavored cigar products are not disproportionately available in minority neighborhoods, but the studies document higher odds of a store being a cigar bar or a lounge for retailers located in neighborhoods with higher proportion of black residents. So I continue on, Um, which may contribute to inequities in tobacco-related diseases and disabilities. Being a cigar bar, being a cigar bar requires patrons to be over the age of 21, where where adults enjoy cigars and spirits paired together. Key word there, adults. 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 You ever heard somebody say adults instead of adults? I don't get it. It's like pillow. It's pillow. What? People say pillow. The fuck is a pillow? Yeah, exactly. It's pillow. It's pillow. Yeah. That's like people say bagel. Yeah. Fucking bagel. It's a bagel, dude. 
It's a fucking bagel, dude. <laughs> okay. Ah, I'll take a bagel. Can I have a bagel and creme cheese? Um, no, it's a fucking bagel. Mm, don't you and cream star. cheese? Okay. So here we go again. The fuck is a pillow. This data indicates that black residents are more likely to purchase these products, aka flavored cigars, which strikes the chord of the notion at youth age and availability. The findings dispute the idea. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me bring this back. The data indicates that black residents are more likely to purchase these products in an age-gated venue, which strikes at the chord of the notion of youth usage and availability. The findings disrupt the idea that the systematic target that they systematically target specific racial or ethnic groups with flavored cigar offerings. All right, I have a theory. Okay, theories are good. Okay, they're talking about um. Like how flavored cigars are targeting underprivileged areas and targeting youth. Okay, I have a theory. Hook it up. In if you're in like a let's say you're in an underprivileged under okay, let me re- rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. How many convenience stores and gas stations are there in comparison? To cigar lounges. Rough estimate. Five times. Ten, ten to times, one. Ten, ten to one. What do you typically see in a convenience store and a gas station when it comes to smokable products? Non-premium cigars. Non-premium. You see the backwoods. The wine-flavored Swisher Sweets. Back, uh, the berry-flavored flavored Black and Miles. Miles. The vanilla flavor, right? So do you think that the reason that they're saying or the reason that they they see, quote, they see or say that these cigars are targeting to the young kids is because it's just more readily available in convenience stores, right? Kids are going into convenience stores. Kids go into gas stations. There aren't cigar lounges in underprivileged areas, but there is a 7-Eleven and there is a gas station and... They're not going to carry a fucking Padron. They're going to carry a berry-flavored White Owl. But it still goes back all the way to saying you need to be 21. No, I get that. I get that. No, no. I know you do. I'm just saying. So there's like just with that basis alone, you need to be 21 to purchase any tobacco-related products. Right. So how are you stating it's going after the youth? No, it's not. It's 100% not. But I'm just saying when they go, oh, it's uh, it's, you know... The underprivileged areas are buying more of these than premium cigars. Yeah, because the underprivileged areas don't have a cigar lounge. Because cigar lounges are for people that have disposable income mm-hmm. to go and sit in a cigar lounge. Mm-hmm. You're not going to put one of those in an area that doesn't have disposable income. No doubt. But you will have a convenience store, and you'll sell a berry-flavored white owl for a dollar. I mean, they talk about it in here. They, they talk about how it's, it's offensive you know, to these different demographics. Let me see here. Um, the study aims to persuade people to believe there is a health equity <coughs> gap because of the indoor secondhand smoke connected to cigar, bar- cigar bars or lounges. Cigar bars and lounges have advanced ventilation systems, often required by state regulations or local zoning ordinance. Absolutely. You know, there, how many times have you been in a lounge where it, it you can't see anything? Not uh, very few. Not, not too many times, right? Maybe in here. So uh, yeah, maybe yeah, maybe in here our ventilation maybe in the isn't stew. that good. Maybe uh, in the stew. Let's see. Uh, this this diversity within the cigar industry challenges the stereotype that flavored cigars are a monolithic entity aimed solely at a particular demographic. Advocates argue that banning flavored cigars is a protective measure shielding vulnerable popula- uh, populations from potential allure. Uh, first, the choice of legal age adults to consume a product legal product in an age-gated environment should be an essential factor to consider. Second, the offensive premise of this regulation is insulting to minority communities as it, as it rests on a belief that these groups cannot make informed decisions for themselves and that the government must come in to make a decision for them. This is an insult to the diversity and inclusiveness of cigar shops, lounges, and bars across the country that bring people together across race, creed, socioeconomic status, religion, and political affiliation. And I just want to say one thing about uh, where it's saying the government 
want, you know, wants to make this decision for them and let them, you know, minorities can't make educated decisions because they just can't. They don't have the resources and they need the government. There's a video out there that I've seen that they they go to like a prestige college. A guy goes to a prestige college, asks all these young, young, predominantly like uppity white people, right? And <laughs> uppity then, white people. Uppity white young students and also like professors and older uppity white uh, people at the school. And they ask, do, uh, you know, do you believe that in lower income areas – they know where their local DMV is. And they're like, no, I don't think so. Do you know how they would find resources? And they talk, start talking about how uh, it might be hard for them to find where the DMV is because they don't have internet access. I they, think uh, I've uh, seen this. It, and it's ridiculous. And they're just saying all these terrible things. People obviously who don't live in these areas are saying these most preposterous things. They don't have internet access. They don't know how to use the internet. They don't know where their DMV is. They don't carry around driver's license. So... Then they go to like the city. They go to like Harlem or some kind of low yeah. income area and they just start interviewing people and they're like, Do you carry your license? Yeah. Who doesn't carry their license? Yeah, it's right here. Do you know where your local DMV is? Yeah, it's on forty second street and you know, and you know, Harlem over there. Blah, blah, blah. Do you know do you have internet? Yeah, who doesn't have internet? It yeah. just it's just like this big disconnect. <laughs> yeah. And it what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the these uppity white people in college is like the government saying, Oh, we have to help these people yeah. because they don't know how to function in society when it's like no we're capable adults yeah. we're educated we make decisions for yep. ourselves we know what to do so it's just typical garbage government bullshit i think that's that same guy or a very similar guy did something with uh he said that when people th- say that others are offended by x y and z he goes into oh, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. dresses he dresses in a sombrero, and I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what the what the outfit is called. If it has a name, he just like he dressed but, like a but, Mexican, but, a Chinese person. Yeah, like he dresses in a in a Mexican outfit of Mexican culture with the colors, and it's like a like a poncho style thing. Yeah, it probably yeah. has a specific name. I don't know it, but he has a sombrero on. He puts a, a mustache on or like a little goatee, whatever, and he dresses of Mexican culture, and he goes into. Uh, he college. goes to like a college and he goes to just non uh, Mexican descent people, right? People of uh, not of Hispanic or Mexican descent. And he asks them, he goes, do you find my outfit offensive? And one girl was just like, well, are you Mexican? He goes, no. She goes, yeah, then that's offensive because you're not Mexican. You shouldn't be wearing that. Goes to another person and said, yeah, I think that's very offensive to the Mexican culture. And I don't think that you should be wearing all these people. Are like, yeah, it's offensive. Yeah, it's offensive. Yeah, it's offensive. Then he goes to a Mexican town and and goes to like a Mexican bar and he starts asking all of them. He goes, do you find this offensive? And they go, not at all. He goes, you look great. That's fucking awesome. And then he goes to another guy. He goes, do you find my outfit offensive? He goes, no, nah, man, you look good, man. Yeah, you look good, yeah. brother. That's great. And he has a cheer. He's drinking with them. Yeah. And none of them are offended. They're all like. He does that He does that with like, you know, like either a Japanese or a Chinese yeah, outfit yep, with yep. the hats. And they're like, yeah, that's extremely offensive. You're not. And they're like, no, we're, so it's, you're celebrating us. This is great. We yeah. love this. So it's literally. The, the exactly what you were saying before and exactly what this guy, what I was just saying is the point of the people that try to make the laws are those people that that say that it's offensive or say that they don't know what to or so those are the touch. those are that's the government that's making laws thinking they know what's going on meanwhile what's really happening is like no you're that that's not what's happening at all just like with the Washington Redskins I was just gonna say that I right? was just gonna bring that with up with the Washington Redskins they had to change the name to the Washington Commanders because they said Red, Redskins were offensive meanwhile they asked Majority, they asked like, you know, a hundred of eighty-five percent of white people said, "Yeah, it's offensive." Eighty-five percent of black people said, "Yeah, it's offensive." Then they asked uh, Native Americans, and like two percent found it offended. Like, no, it's <laughs> it's a way of celebrating our culture. <laughs> like, and no, our, I'm not name. offended by it at all. Like, I really don't give a Listen, shit. I have America better things to do. America is a melting pot. It's, it's America so is built. Stupid. America is built on immigration, different countries. That's how America is built, and it's all about intertwining and celebrating each other's cultures, backgrounds, yeah. holidays. So it's like. It's so ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous how far, how far stupid we become <clears throat> recently in society. Yeah. And it's just government is just. I think people are waking up, but uh, it's just really. God, stupid. I hope so. It's just really stupid. Anyway, so anyways, um, that's gonna do it. That's that's yeah. a short episode. It's a thirty minute mark. Yeah. So th- that's it. So again, FDA, the government's trying to tell you and tell us that cigars, flavored cigars, are Don't being listen. are guided towards youth. And minority backgrounds. And there minority ain't community. no data 
to support that. No, there's not. And it's just so typical. And on another note, we want to give a shout out or Tony Gomez, LFD Cigars. Just became uh, one of the board members of the Cigar Rights of America. Did you see that? Oh, shit. Pre- previous burned down guest, Tony Gomez. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, the son of Lito Gomez of La Flor Dominicana Cigars. Just, hell yeah, hell yeah, brother. Just got on the board for Cigar Rights of America. So shout out to Tony Gomez on that. That's pretty big. Uh, that's pretty it. big. But um, again, no, we want to bring you some cigar facts. Of course, people are going to disagree with us and say, this is stupid. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Don't care. Yada, yada, yada. Show me facts. <laughs> show me data. Where, show me the money. Show me where flavored cigars and companies are saying, we want children to smoke this. Show me the money. So if you guys like this episode, please hit that like button on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every single time we drop a new video. If you're listening to the podcast. Either Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever it is, give us a five star review. Give us a nice review. Verbally type it in. We love Eric and Justin. These guys are the best. Blah, 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 blah. We really appreciate it. And uh, become a member on our website, burndownpodcast.com. Exclusive discounts, monthly giveaways, and get 15% off the Burndown Podcast. Believe it or not, we're the actually. Blueprint. What did I say? The Burn Down Podcast? <laughs> well, it's made by the Burn Down Podcast. The, the, Blueprint. the Blueprint Cigar. We're actually last month's giveaway winner of the website. He actually declined the prize, which was he did. Uh, signed Burn Down Ashtray, Cigar Cutter, um, Cigar Torch, and Blueprints. And he said, hey, is that offer still to uh, do a 30-minute virtual herf available? And we said, sure. So after this episode, we'll be hanging out with him for 30 minutes. So sign up, burndownpodcast.com. Justin and Eric. Brother Cigar, Dapper Cigar. Cheers, chin chin, salute. Love you guys.